And I know how to be content at the Shangri-La Hotel, eating an unlimited buffet. Are you, are you hearing me this morning? I know how to be content with a little e-scooter, driving through my car park too fast, and I shouldn't do it. God bless those e-scooter people. And I know how to be content driving a Mercedes Benz. Come on. I know how to be content with a little or I know how to be content in Singapore. I know how to be content on the mission field. I know how to be content when I'm leading. I know how to be content when someone else is leading me. I know how to be content, how to live with almost nothing or everything. And I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or an empty stomach, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I can do everything through Christ, literally, like who empowers me, who satisfies me, who gives me strength. Isn't that amazing? He says, I've learned the secret of being content. Hebrews 13, 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. What are these scriptures saying? God is enough. God is interested in my needs. He has promised to provide for me. God will give me everything I need, and so I am content right now. I'm okay. I'm okay if I didn't upgrade my, my phone this year. I can be content with what I have. I can be content right now. God, you promised to provide. I know you're going to provide for me. And, and you see, the thing about it is contentment frees us then to make wise financial decisions. Contentment will free you in your life to do things out of wisdom. The Bible has a lot to say about wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to discern what really matters. Wisdom discerns what is truly valuable. And, and when you talk about finances and possessions, there's a need for us to understand how to really discern what really matters because your culture and society will say, hey, always want more. You always need more. You've got to go for more. Don't be content with what you have. Always think about what you could get. But wisdom isn't always that way. And if my financial decisions are driven by the world's culture and understanding, I'm going to get myself into trouble. Here's the wisdom. Check this out. I pulled some Proverbs out. Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, the Bible says. And he wrote a book called Proverbs. If you want to live your life better, hey, if you want to be blessed in your finance, you better start reading the book of Proverbs. A friend of mine says it this way. A proverb a day keeps the stupid away. All right? <laughs> Here, Proverbs 12, 9. Better to be lowly. Everyone say better. better. Come on, shout it. Say better. Better to be lowly, humble, and have a servant than to play the great man and lack bread. He goes, it's better to actually be humble, but financially you're stable, than to try to do everything to impress everyone, but you're stretched so thin, there's no overflow. It's better. It's wiser. This is the way to go. Proverbs 15, 16. It's better, come on, say better. Better, better to have little with the fear of the Lord than to have great treasure and inner better to be content with what you have and know God is on my side than have all the stuff life could offer, but I'm not secure. Uh, Proverbs 15, 17. A bowl of vegetables with someone you love is better than steak with someone you hate. It's a new living translation. I like this model. It's, it's, it's better, right? It's better than my, my chiffon with it, someone I love is better, right? Than going out to, to some kind of fried rib place with someone that I hate. Proverbs 16, 8. Better to have little, I don't say better, better, with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. Proverbs 16, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold and good judgment than silver? 17, 1. Better to try crust, eaten in, a, in peace, than a house filled with feasting and conflict. He's talking about some of your Virginia dinner. All right. Proverbs 22, 1. <laughs> Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver. Or gold. What's he saying? Listen, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying you can't be blessed, you can't have finance. But what I'm saying is having more is not always a better life. It's not always better. There's a wisdom. And when I'm content, I'm all of a sudden I'm free to discern and say, where do I want to put my money? Where do I want to put my finance? 
how do I want to use this? Do I want to make this investment? If I think it's good, if I think this is right, if I have peace about it, then great. But I'm not driven in those things by just an insatiable desire for more because of discontent. Wait, do I want to give a little more to someone? Well, I'm not going to regret the giving. I'm okay with giving because I'm content with what I have. All of a sudden, I'm free with how I use my finance. Contentment will enable you to be a producer and not just a consumer. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, each one must give as he's decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, right? The ushers don't come and tap you on the shoulders. They put more in the back. He says, God loves a cheerful giver. Maybe we should have the ushers tap people and tell them, hey, smile. Take your money back out. Smile. Put it back in. He says, and God is able. Listen, don't give under compulsion. Don't be discontent. Don't be discontent. God loves a cheerful way. Be content. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that having all sufficiency. What is sufficiency? It's actually the same word, contentment. It's the same word that, that they use for contentment. All sufficiency, all contentment, in all things, at all times, you can abound in every good work. All of a sudden, when I'm content, I can be a producer, not just a consumer. My life is not just about me. God can begin to flow through me. God can bring a blessing through my life. All of a sudden, I can be the solution for someone else. I can provide for someone else. I can be a provision for my family. I can be a provision for others around me. I can be a provision for needs in the kingdom because I am content. I, I, in other words, you can have money. Money just can't have you. Right? I can be content with what I have. So I can share with others. Contentment allows me to respond in faith, knowing that God always supplies my need. Now, this is where I want to end as the worship team comes. Let me, let me rewind and go back to 1 Kings 17, and this is where we close. Let me show you this. Three areas that we need to be content in our lives that will transform how you use your finance. It will transform your ability to trust God financially. And bring you in to an area of overflow. Three areas, right, that we need contempt. And then I want to tell you tonight, don't miss the evening service tonight, all right? We're going to be talking about how you access the blessing of God. We're going to be praying for financial blessing and provision over everybody in our house. you got to come back and be here. It's going to be powerful. But first, First Kings 17 says, Elijah from Tishbe and Gilead told Ahab, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. The first area that you need to be content in your life is that you need to be content with the Lord. We need to be content with the Lord. Am I content that God is the one that I serve? Am I content in where God is leading? Am I content that God is enough for my life? Elijah makes a crazy statement. There's going to be no rain. Elijah doesn't even know where his next meal is coming from. God didn't tell him yet, go by the brook. Elijah doesn't know, what's the king going to do to me when I say this? But he's content in the Lord. He says, it's the God that I serve. And my God is going to be enough. My God is going to be enough to supply you talk about being in a financial overflow, you've got to begin to content yourself with the Lord. Everything was about to change for Elijah, but he knew that God was enough for that season. Can I ask you today, are you content enough with the Lord that you're ready to move into whatever season God has for your life? Are you content with the Lord? Are you content? Are you secure that God will supply all of your needs according to His riches and growth? Are you content that, and sure in your heart that God's going to provide your daily bread, the things that you need to get through your life. He is enough for you. Am I content with the Lord? Is God enough? Because if God isn't enough, no amount of money, no amount of possessions will ever be enough for you. No amount of relationships, lifestyle, changes in your life, you will never be satisfied. God has to be enough. I need to be content with the Lord. I'm here to tell you today, God is enough for your life. So you've been searching for answers in so many places for so long. And I, I gotta tell you, the real answer for your life is not in another course, it's not in a lifestyle coach or some book or some new idea. The answer for your life is found in God. 
and we connect our lives with God through putting our faith in Jesus. It was Jesus who came and died for us. It was Jesus who took our sins on the cross. It was Jesus that allows us by faith to be forgiven and accepted. And suddenly my life is connected with a God who cares about me enough that I can be content in every season because he always comes to supply my needs. Be content with the Lord. The second area that we need contentment is this. We need to be content with God's plan. We need to be content with God's plan. With his plan. Elijah says, there's going to be no rain. And then God speaks to Elijah and he says, Elijah, I want you to move to the brook. You know why sometimes we get in financial trouble? Because we don't listen to God's plan. When God says move, do you move? When God says stay, do you stay? When God says, I'm calling you into this, do you do, you do it? When God says, I want to use you in this area, are you ready to obey? Are you content with God's plan? Because we all expect God to provide. We're saying, God, I want an overflow. Lord, give me, give me more resources, abundance, finance. Yes, fine, but are you content with God's plan? When God says, move by the brook. When God says, ravens are going to feed you for this season. Can you be content that God knows what he's doing? Can you be content that God's going to actually move you in and provide for you? When he says, move to Zarephath, can I be content that if this is where God wants me, this is where he will provide for for me. i got to be content with his plan. And that means I need to stop comparing my life with other people's life. This is where God has me. This is where he wants to lead me. God, you are enough in my daily life right now. I'm going to content myself with your plan. If you are not content with the plan of God, you're going to end up in financial difficulty. But if you want to step into a place where you can be free in your heart and be uh, uh, available to step in to a financial overflow, it starts with Contentment. Can you say amen this morning? Come on, it starts with contentment. Here's the last one, and we're going to close. Be content with the Lord. Be content with God's plan. And then lastly, be content with God's provision. We need to be content with God's provision. Right? The way that he provides. The timing that he provides. For Elijah, first, the Bible says, he, he said, go to the east and go to the brook. Drink from the brook. And eat what the ravens give you. Right? God's provision. Okay, God, you gave me a brook to drink from. And then suddenly it's okay, birds are going to bring some food for me. Can I be content with what God provided in this season? God, you gave me this job. Lord, you gave me this opportunity. You got me into this course, in this school. But look, can I be content with it? Then God moves them on and says, I'm taking you to a widow who has a a bit of flour. Every day it might just be a little bit of bread, but can you be content? Yet there will be a season coming where the rain comes and there's abundance, but would you be content in what I provide for what I provide? Be content in God's provision. When I'm content with God's provision, all of a sudden, I'm free in my heart. I'm free in my heart. I know, God, this is enough right now. Lord, there's seasons of overflow you're bringing, but I'm content right now. I'm not going to be more content when there's abundance. I'm going to be content right now. And Lord, right now, if you want me to give, if you want me to use my friends for something, you're calling me to a different place. I'm content in you. If you ask me to do this, you're going to be enough. When I am content, I'm in a place that I can receive overflowing supply and have everything that I need, but it starts in this part of my heart. Are you hearing me today? Today, I want us to pray. If you're here this morning and you need God to come into your life and do a miracle. You're not a Christian today. And by that, I mean you might have gone to church before, but there's never been a point in time where you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior. There's never been a point where you say, yes, my sins were forgiven and God became the Savior of my heart. Today, you can experience that right now. Before you worry about having an overflow in your finances, you need to have an overflow in your heart. God wants to come and do what no one else can do. To give you hope in the future. The Bible says He saw you before you were born and has a plan for your life. And if in this moment you would open up your heart to Jesus, He would come in. And you would begin to have a relationship with Him that would transform your life. You would never be alone again. He would never flee you. Never begin to have a hope for the future. If that's you this morning and you say, you know what, I need Jesus in my 
my life. I want to pray for you. And so across all of our seven locations, if that's what you need at this morning, you say, you know what, pray for me. I want Jesus in my heart. Then in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand so that I can see in other locations. The executive minister is going to help me keep a lookout for the hands. They're going to see you. We're going to pray together as you lift up your hand. Let's see your hand. You can just put it down right after that. And we're going to pray together. And God is going to transform your life. Can we do this together this morning? With every eye closed and no one looking around, 